The Southern Lakes District of the South Island is one of the world's great winter wonderlands. People from all over the world come to experience everything this stunning region has to offer. For the next two weeks, the towns of Queenstown and Wanaka are home to the world's best snow sport athletes. Here to compete at one of the most popular events on the calendar, the Audi Quattro Winter Games. This year sees a record 920 competitors from 39 countries here to compete on the world-class facilities. Coronet Peak will host the Alpine events, while Cadrona Alpine Resort will see the best free skiers and snowboarders throw down. Over at the aptly named Remarkables, the North Face Frontier will test big mountain skiers and snowboarders to the limit. From the Remarkables, we head to Snow Farm in the Cadrona Valley for the cross-country race program. Treble Cone hosts the exciting adaptive bank slalom, and in the picturesque settlement of Naseby, the deaf sport of curling will be on show with a host of international class competitors. With the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, less than six months away, competitors in all sports and disciplines will be at their very best as their quest for Olympic gold begins. Hello and welcome to Cornet Peak. I'm Hugh Hutchison and this is the very first event of the 2017 Audi Quattro Winter Games. Tonight we're here at Cornet Peak for the opening ceremony and the nighttime dual slalom. Some of the powerhouse nations of world skiing are here in Queenstown to compete in this very exciting head-to-head -head discipline. That looks good. Snow is a little soft, but I think, yeah, they did, did a great job preparing it now, so it should be fine. I mean, it's parallel. It's action from, from start to bottom, and uh, you just try to make out some, some good speed and uh, be, uh, yeah, ready over the jump, and uh, you can gain a lot of time on the last part of the course. Uh, it's great, hey, it's, there is even sunshine right now, so yeah, I felt great. <laughs> um, just took a look at it and it looks great. It's a stacked field, there's some really good skiers here, so it's gonna be hard. The lights come on and it gets a little more exciting, you know, um, the crowd comes out and yeah, just nighttime, everything's a little more exciting. It looks really fun right now. There's a couple people skied it already, so there's a there's like some bumps in it, and uh, but it looks pretty nice. No better place than Coronet Peak to do it. <laughs> it's awesome here. We love it. Already we've seen some exciting racing in the qualifying rounds and the top 16 races. The last minute entry of the Swedish team was expected to shake things up, and it has, with Andre Meyer and Matthias Hargen making it through to the quarterfinals. A strong showing also from the US ski team with three men and three ladies progressing through the opening rounds. For the local fans, two men and two ladies made the top 16. 15-year-old Queenstown local Alice Robinson was going well until the second heat of her race when unfortunately she missed a gate and handed the race to Slovakian Barbara Kantarova. Meanwhile, the best performing Kiwi was Piera Hudson, who found herself in the semi-finals after a heat against Italian Elena Sanduli. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was, I'm really happy for to do the parallel slam. That we've done a few races here in New Zealand, and I like it here. It's really nice. So the full lineup for our semi-finals looks like this. In the ladies' semi-final, the first race will be between Patricia Mangan of USA against Barbara Kantarova from Slovakia. And the second semi-final will be between Martina Dubovska from Czechoslovakia and Piera Hudson from New Zealand. 
In the men's semi-final, the first race will be between Matthias Hargen of Sweden and his teammate Andre Myra. And in the second race, David Chadownski from Team USA will be up against Reto Schmeidiger from Switzerland. I think it's a pretty challenging course. We've seen from the qualification and quarterfinal rounds that the red course is running a little faster. Now, of course, that doesn't matter because the skiers get to ski each course. So each pair will have two runs. And whoever is fastest on the first run uh, will take a, a ma that margin onto the second run. But uh, at the end of the day, first to cross the line on the second run will win and progress to tonight's final. So we're just a couple of minutes away from the second run of the night dual slalom here at Cornet Peak and we'll be starting with the women. So first up will be Piera Hudson from New Zealand in bib number seven skiing on the red course against Martina Dubovska skiing in bib number two. A very competent slalom skier and they're on course. Both skiing smoothly, getting into a good rhythm, setting up for the first jump. Oh, and it's neck and neck. This really is good competitive skiing. There's nothing in it, hard to call across the line. Well, it looked to me as if Trisha Mangan from the USA just sneaked that on the blue course. Yeah, so into the final, that's pretty, pretty outstanding. First event of the year. <laughs> yeah, I know. I usually crash in these events, so it's nice to make it down, More, much less make the final. <laughs> and on course, Peria Hudson from New Zealand against Martina Dubovska on blue. And Martina had a one second advantage from the first run, but she is skiing on this more difficult blue course and it is now looking pretty close. It's going to be very good finish. But sure enough, Martina Dubovska just holds out to win. Congratulations into the final. A, a good way to start the season. Yeah, I hope one, two more runs and then I will be satisfied. Oh, it really is looking like a night Joe slalom now. It's pretty dark and the floodlights are illuminating the course. So this will be an absolute sprint now. There is uh, very little in it from the first run. And we're on course. Andre Myra taking a little bit of a lead. And he must be thinking, if the red course is still running faster, that he's got this in the bag. But he can't afford to make any mistakes. And there's a little one straight after the jump. I think he's got it, though. Yep, a decent lead, and he crosses the line, and it will be Andre Myra who goes into tonight's final. You never want to lose against a teammate, but on the other hand, we have a really strong team. We're looking forward to the Olympics in Sochi, or in Pyeongchang, that was the last time. And uh, we have the ice on the, on the gold medal in the dual team event, so I think we, we look strong and keep, keep going like this. And, yeah, that's a big goal. David uh, Chudansky will be taking a 0.28 advantage into this second run. And he might well need it because he's on this slightly more difficult blue course. And I think there really will be nothing in this. David, of course, was second two years ago. He'd love to better that. They come into the top jump, both squash it well. Well, yet again, we see the red course possibly running just a little quicker. And indeed, it's Reto who's across the line first. And it will be the Swiss who goes into the final. David will be bitterly disappointed. He couldn't carry the lead from the first run through that second round to get him into the final. But a very good competition. Some world-class skiing here and some incredibly talented athletes. Great for the locals to be able to see competition of this caliber, and particularly for the kids who got their chance to race this course earlier in the week. Today we're running a dual slalom for the kids up here. It's kind of a test event for the Friday night event for the big one, yeah. Kids are today very excited to run the race here. Woohoo! 
there are World Cup athletes here. World Cup athletes, they already won World Cups, they already won um, World Championships and the Olympics, and the kids are already excited, yeah. 345, red 44 on course. Racing! Racing and having fun. Yeah, come on, get up. And running. Try to get close to the gates, and um, remember to get your hands in front of you. Go, you get on! Come on, Luca, come on! The level, it's different to back home um, in Europe, yeah? But when I see under eight, under 10 kids um, skiing here and racing here, they're on the same level. Under 14, under 16, it's dropping a little bit, but a few of them are on the same level. We need to try um, to bring more kids on that level and to bring it up to the fist age as well. What the fist, they're starting with 16, and there um, it's like a, a real start on racing afterwards as well. Yeah, I enjoy it. And it's pretty good, you gotta go hard, move their feet the whole way down. Just full send, don't hold back or anything like that. Just, just send it. You know, everybody has a starting point. Um, all these kids have dreams of success and being in the Olympics, representing their country. And I think for me, I was one of the lucky ones to make it to the Olympic level and be one of the best in the world. But um, even if I hadn't, skiing has taught me so much about life and just grit and endurance and being able to basically push through anything. It's, it's just been an educational experience for life for me as well. You got it. Go now. They need to get really strong in the head, injected the mentality from a young age on, and then um, it's possible. Um, New Zealand is kind of alpine country, yeah, so they have very good environment over here, um, perfect training conditions, yeah, so it's possible to get um, all class athletes out. My very first race is a funny story. I pushed out of the gate and halfway down my dad's watching and he's on the sideline there and he yells out, go, go, go. He's like, you know, cheering me on. And um, I stop, look at him, say, what, dad? He's like, nothing, never mind, just go, go, go. So it was, um, I remember that to this day. Uh, but I've, you know, I've gotten better and when people cheer me on, I don't stop anymore. Winter Games open. I was here when they started the Winter Games, which was just an idea from a few energised people. And now they've turned it into this event that's, that's now got global reach. I just love the events and, and just to put something on for the world, the best athletes coming, um, something that shows off our region is just something special that um, you do a lot of planning, you get nervous, but the excitement's here once we get rolling. First run of the women's petite final on course. Well, both girls really going for it. Good smooth skiing, charging, and again this red course looking to just be running a little faster as Barbara takes a little lead, driving for the line, and that'll be a small advantage to take into the second run, but again very good skiing from Piera Hudson. Well we're just a minute or two away from the men's petite final. Again, this is the race for third place in the bronze medal. And on the red course, we'll have Matthias Hargen in bib number one from Sweden, skiing against David Chodowski in bib number seven from Team USA. Now, just to put into perspective the quality of skiers that we are lucky enough to have here at Cornet Peak this evening, um, <laughs> world's finest uh, slalom athletes, no question about it. And they're in the gate and ready to start. Hard to call this one. Hargen, having won the World Cup slalom in Kitzbühel, 
back in 2015, probably the hardest slalom course on the World Cup Tour against David Chodansky, and we know a lot about him. He was second here two years ago in the dual slalom. And this is dynamic stuff. Nothing in it as they come to the first jump. Oh, again, just coming out of the, the jump. The red course is definitely a little faster. So it's Matthias Hagen who takes a slender advantage into the second run, but I wouldn't like to call it at this stage. Racers are in the gate for the women's A final between Trisha Mangan of the USA, just 20 years old, but a huge talent in this American team, up against Martina Dubovska on course. Really rhythmical, smooth skiing. Setting up for the jump, squashing it. Again, the red course proving to be a little smoother and faster, and so it's Trisha Mangan who crosses the line first. Again, a fairly slender advantage and uh, not easy to predict what might happen, but she's got the lead to take into this tougher, more technical blue course for the second run. Andre Myra from Sweden, now 34 years old. A fantastic record that he's got, a triple Olympian. Won the bronze back in 2010. And they're on course. Absolute charge into the jump. And it's Andre Meyer who's uh, got a slight lead, driving to the finish. And he's just ahead of Reto. Well, hard to call it. The Swiss will be a little bit disappointed. It's going to be tough to pull that back. But he knows he's got the easier red course in the second run of the final. So. It's all up for grabs here at Cornet Peak. So the second run of the ladies' petite final between Piera Hudson, who'll be skiing on the red course. The local girl, of course, up against Barbara Kantarova, more experienced and uh, about 100 places higher ranked in uh, the World Slalom rankings. And they're on course. Barbara with that slight lead from the first run. The question is, can she hold it down this technical blue course? Good smooth skiing into the top jump and there's not much in this, it's tight. Over the jump, very close. Now come on Piera, can you do this? Driving into the finish, not quite enough for Piera. So Barbara Kantarova from Slovakia takes the win and with that the bronze medal. To get on the podium, it's a very good effort. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Hey, today, whole day is perfect. The atmosphere here and the slope, the lights and all the people here, it's perfect. <laughs> and the runs, they, they went okay for you? Uh, yeah, it was actually fight every run. Like, you should fight for it, really go for it. And then that's, that was a big challenge for all the racers here because you just stand on the start and you just want to go as fast as you can and not to make the mistakes. So it was perfect training as well. Next up. We've got the men's petite final, the competition for third place and the bronze medal in the Audi Quattro Winter Games New Zealand night dual slalom. David Chidansky will be skiing on the red course this run. And Matthias Hagen from Sweden, wearing bib number one on the blue. And we are ready. On course. Well, as we would expect, both skiers absolutely driving, taking a very tight line, setting up for the jump. Almost nothing in this. But it's David Chidansky who crosses the line first. He had the advantage of the slightly faster red course. He made up a disadvantage and he has taken third place and the bronze medal this evening.
So, first one of the year and you make the podium, it's not bad? That's all right, I'm happy, yeah. It was, uh, it's a long day coming up here, starting in the afternoon and running into the night, but uh, it's good, I'm tired, but a good tired, I'll sleep well tonight, and uh, yeah, no, happy with my skiing. The second run of the women's final. Just about ready to start, we've got Martina Dubovska skiing on the red course. And both racers on course, Trisha Mangan taking a slight lead onto this slightly more technical blue course. But there's not much in it as they come to the jump. Both squash it well. This is gonna be very tight. Oh, and a mistake, a mistake by Martina. She's out of it. And that means Trisha Mangan from Team USA at just 20 years old wins the gold medal this evening here at Cornet Peak. She is the women's champion and congratulations. Fantastic skiing through all the rounds and a terrific performance in the final. Hold up. I need to send you back up for a rerun. The lights are incorrect and are not working on the other side of the course. Can you please go to the top of the course? Copy that. We've just heard that the technical issue with the second run in the women's final was to do with the start lights in the start gate, uh, which failed to operate correctly. And so a rerun has been called of this second run. Second run of the men's final. And on the red course, Reto Schmeidiger up against Andre Meyer from Sweden on the blue course. Good aggressive start from both skiers. Now they're gonna go flat out for this. And of course, Meyer has got to carry at that small lead on this more technical blue course. Over the jump, little mistake, but carries the speed well. There's not much in this, but he's got enough. He takes it across the line. And so our winner and taking gold is Andre Meyer of Sweden. Well, he'll be delighted with that, of course. <laughs> A guy who's ranked eighth in the world and at 34 years of age, he's uh, won plenty of competitions, including six World Cups and uh, a bronze at Olympic level. He's a three-time Olympian, but great to add another major title uh, to his collection. A good way to start the season. Yeah, thanks. Always nice to come up with a win. And yeah, I like this kind of an event and uh, it was a good, uh, good wake-up call for coming into next season and yeah, happy to be here. So racers are in the gate and ready. A fascinating matchup in this final. Martina Dubrovska, a very talented slalom skier, up against Trisha Mangan of Team USA, just 20 years old, and she actually prefers the speed disciplines in alpine skiing. Her best discipline is Super G, but she's on great form here. Racers on course. Well, nothing in it as the skiers try to get into a rhythm, but it's so fast, they've got to set up now for the jump. Well, again, with this red course running a little faster, you would think Martina has this in the bag if she doesn't make any mistakes, and sure enough, she crosses the line and takes the gold medal. So it is Martina Dubrovska of Team Czechoslovakia from Slovakia, um, her hometown of Lipkowski, who just pipped Trisha Mangan, who is from Hollymont, USA. Congratulations, a, a, a challenging final. Yeah, yeah, it was. I'm really sorry about the, the run before, but I was always focusing on the lights and they weren't working, so I didn't know what to do. They said me deny, so okay, I was congratulating the the girl but then said me they said me I should go up so I'm happy but I'm really sorry it's just a mixed feeling so yeah but still good to be here competing again you know start the season yeah yeah it's perfect also oh, for sure it's fun and it's really good for confidence and everything else yeah. you know you like get it in your mind that like one more run give it your all but like to be fair winner like I should have been able to win twice so it kind of stinks that that happened but it's okay
The first gold medals of the Audi Quattro Winter Games New Zealand have been decided tonight here at Cornet Peak in the night dual slalom. And in the women's event, it was Martina Dubovska from Czechoslovakia who pipped out Trisha Mangan from Team USA. While in the men, it was Andre Meyer of Sweden who took gold, just beating Reto Schmeidiger from Switzerland.